In this lecture, we're going to discuss the febrile baby. If you've done a pediatric rotation and have spent some, spent some time in the inpatient setting, you've probably encountered a baby who is febrile, who is admitted for what we call a rule-out sepsis, making sure that there's not a more significant uh, cause of illness. I'm going to try and break that down for you here and make it clear so we can understand how and why we manage the babies the way we do. Okay. A fever in an infant is defined as any temperature above 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Generally, we think about serious bacterial infection as a bacterial infection of either the meninges, the blood, or the urinary tract. Already, we've waded into controversy here. Many people do not find that urinary tract infections are actually all that serious, and 1% of infants will have bacteria in their urine and no symptoms at all. But let's consider all of these SBI, or serious bacterial infection. So there is some controversy about how to manage these patients in the United States, and there are schools of thought, and I'm going to take you through some of that. Before we even start with serious bacterial infection, though, we really need to consider the idea of HSV, or herpes simplex virus infection. Do we include these patients in this group or not? Do they present the same or not? Then, after that, we have the question of what do we do with the children in this age of four to eight weeks? Typically, in children under four weeks, they're all getting admitted, and we're going to evaluate them all for bacterial infection. After eight weeks, we usually think of that as a period when children will get urinary tract infections, but the risk of meningitis and bacteremia are much lower. Well, what do we do during this four to eight week period? And there are generally three schools of thought. There's the Rochester criteria, the Philadelphia criteria, and the Boston criteria. I'm optimistic that in the near future, we will have a guideline that will try to bring all this together, but I want to explain these two, three schools of thought for you now. So, in all three schools of thought, they agree that urine and blood is indicated in patients who present between four and eight weeks of age. However, in Rochester, they will only get a spinal tap if the CBC is abnormal in a well-appearing febrile infant, whereas in Philadelphia and Boston, the spinal tap is still obtained. And in neither Rochester nor Philadelphia is an antibiotic necessarily given to children this age, whereas in Boston, they presumably and presumptively give a dose of ceftriaxone. However, what's key is that if preliminary laboratory testing is unremarkable in all three programs, patients can be discharged home from the ER if they have good follow-up, rather than admitted to the hospital. 